Hello, welcome to First Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. We're glad to have you here today in April. And today Carolyn is already on the road, so I will be your facilitator. I'm Jennifer Fenton from the Washington State Library. And we have some very important people helping us out today. Non and Jeremy are your tech support. So if you are having trouble hearing or if you are ha having trouble seeing what's happening, uh, give a shout out and um, let us know so we can help you. And First Tuesdays is brought to you by the Washington State Library and funded through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And today's presenter joins us from the National Archives at Seattle. And she's here to share with you a resource that will hopefully help you with and you help your teachers and students in the library. It's my pleasure to introduce Carol Buswell. I'll let you take it over, Carol. Thank you. Um, hello to everybody. I just should preface this with the with letting you know that I um, I got in from South Carolina last night very late, and I'm just a little bit jet lagged. So if I'm more incoherent than normal, that would explain it, um, hopefully. And and also, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm. We have so many new materials at the National Archives, especially online. We have a whole new interface and all kinds of new things for you to use. Um, I was really excited to be able to bring it to you to um, for you to be able to use it in your work. Um, first of all, I suppose you all know who we are, right? Can you raise your hand if you know who we are? If you know who the National Archives is? Um, there you go. There's somebody. Um, <laughs> great. That's awesome. Um, if if you have ever been to the National Archives in Seattle, could you raise your hand? Diana, Diane, how could you? So we have one person who's been there. Um, but uh, how many of you have used the website? Could you raise your hand if you've used the website? Great. Kat and Jolina. Great. Um, have you used it recently? Yes? No? Well, maybe, you'll, maybe you were frustrated in the past by um, the difficulty that you might have had searching materials on the National Archives website. Um, a lot of that is because we have so many documents. Um, the National Archives nationwide holds over 10 billion original documents from the files of over 550 federal government agencies. Um, the National Archives gets its records from federal government agencies. Um, and basically what they are are desk files. They're the files that these agencies keep in their office. Um, and you can see down at the bottom of this frame, it's, um, it spans a whole, uh, the whole history of the United States um, from the Declaration of Independence, of course, and that's the Dunlap broadside, uh, cluster map of Vietnam. That's actually a heat map. They were searching for um, evidence of POW camps, so they were looking for um, body heat. Um, and also clear to the Hurricane Katrina and beyond. Um, that all those records are in the National Archives, but they're not all online. And so um, our records are, um, of course, important for any primary search source searching and primary um, and additions to any kind of research project for students and teachers. And so and they're also free. They're in the public domain. So you never have to get copyright permissions to use them in anything. 
and we do ask that you cite our records if you use them. Um, that said, that that explains. Well, I'm trying to explain why the National Archives website has, in the past, been a little bit difficult to maneuver. And we have all sorts of different kinds of records as well. Um, our records are spread out across the United States in two Washington, D.C. facilities, 14 regional archives, 13 presidential libraries. And it's also online. We have copies online at archives.gov. Um, the, um, these records are accessible by contacting the individual locations at any time. Um, it's not particularly easy for us to get everything scanned online. Um, we are working on it very hard. We have about, on our own website, we have about a little over 160,000 documents scanned online. And um, on commercial companies, there are several commercial companies that are scanning our records. And those are available on um, Ancestry.com, Heritage Quest, which is only available in public libraries, and and in the archives. At, uh, it's in the National Archives as well, in Seattle and everywhere else. Um, Footnote.com, which is scanning our microfilm, which is there is a lot of information on Footnote.com now that can be very helpful for teachers and librarians as well. And also the LDS Church is scanning our records on their website at familysearch.org. Um, so you can see there's lots of material. Um, each one of our facilities across the United States holds unique original records from the U.S. federal agency offices located in their particular area of the United States. Our particular area is Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. So we have records from the field offices of federal agencies in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. For most, for a lot of agencies, we have about 92 agencies represented in the National Archives in Seattle. And in Anchorage, it co covers, of course, the whole state of Alaska. Um, and then if you were looking in other areas of the United States, for instance, if you wanted copies of something, early naturalizations, perhaps the Armistad case from, um, you know, the slavery case in the very early 1800s, I think it was, I don't remember the exact date, 1830, I think, um, you can find copies of the original documents there. Some of those documents are online as well. The one thing you have to be careful of online is that our documents, occasionally only portions of the documents are scanned because they're the most important parts. And um, oftentimes the least important parts are actually more, um, can, can be as useful if not more useful than other parts. Um, for instance, we have a um, prohibition case file, and there are several documents from that prohibition case file online, including um, a picture of the still that the um, bootleggers were using. It's not a photograph. It's a sketch of the still. But I was sending volunteers through the actual documents themselves and found the recipe for um, moonshine whiskey, which I thought was really fun. Um, and not that anybody would perhaps maybe want to give that to their class, but um, it still is a very uh, interesting part of that document that was not scanned. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> um, so this is what our facility in Seattle and and the, uh, and the one in Anchorage looks like. Ours is much bigger. Seattle's is much bigger than Anchorage. Um, and and you're welcome to come there anytime. We do have materials there that aren't anywhere else, and we also, you know, original documents as well as um, access to um, 
microfilm and other resources, as well as help, uh, which might be useful for any of you as well. So we welcome you at any time. We're open every day from 9 to, uh, not 9, we're open from 7.45 to 4.15 Monday through Friday and from 9 to 4 on the second Saturday of every month. And you're welcome to come. We also have workshops at the facility, um, at all of our facilities across the United States. Um, we have, uh, as I said, microfilm copies of original documents. We, ho we have about 75,000 different um, rolls of microfilm, and including the United States Census. You have consulate records and court records and immigration records, all sorts of things like that. And we also have free access to commercial websites um, that uh, provide in those commercial in uh, websites that I mentioned before. Um, what I'm going to talk about today are some new things that we have. We have a new front page. We have some new online tools that are, are were really developed, <coughs> excuse me, for school teachers and for students and for librarians. Um, <coughs> sorry, lack of sleep. Um, anyway. Um, uh, what we're going to talk about right now is the online public access system, which is our new search engine. If you've ever used the National Archives website, you know that the search engine was the ARC, our ARC search engine, our archival research catalog search engine is a little bit um, difficult. It was developed before all of this happened on the web, and um, it's a little archaic in that respect. And it has uh, some difficult methods of searching. But what they've done with this online public access system is um, try to combine materials that you can search topically from archival research catalogs and also from the legislative archives, which is really important. Um, any acts of Congress, et cetera, or um, there's other issues, and I mean, other materials in there that can be useful as well. And also National Archives lesson plans and topical exhibits. That's really where our topics are the best created or best put together is in the exhibits. And they've been doing those for a lot from, for a very long time. And um, those exhibits can really help you with particular topics. And the lesson plans are put together by um, the eras that um, are put together by the National Education Association, and um, and they're on several topics. And there, uh, we have just so much material. So, but the no online public access system can combines all of that, and with some exceptions, searches them all, and it searches them in a more topical way, which can be really helpful for you. I still would recommend that no matter what you do, you search using one word searches in the National Archives if you possibly can, and then just do several searches using one word, one topical word. Um, this is how you get to it. This is our new front page at the National Archives website. Um, on the website, you, you can see that you have fewer choices than you used to have. and and they're more specific. You can see there are teacher resources there. That's where the lesson plans are, the um, analysis worksheets for any kind of primary source, um, and also connections to uh, new connections to uh, web, uh, web lessons that have been produced by teachers out in the regions uh, outside of Washington, D.C. But today, what I'm going to just talk about for this online public access system is um, how to research our records, how to get to that online public access search engine. And you do that by clicking on Research Our Records. And then um, you can see this particular frame says, Try Our New Online Public Access System. They change that title on a daily basis, so I don't know what it is today. Um, but and you notice that it's third or fourth. I think it's moved up to third place now um, on the list. 
you can search using any of those um, those items under search online and get materials, but the online public access system will combine them for you and do a search of all of them. So you'd want to go there first if possible. Um, and this is, you know, the introduction page and where you actually enter the topic that you want to search. Um, and this is what you get. You get this page, and at the very top of the page, it gives you several. It it, it shows you digital copies of actual documents. It's called um, online holdings. Um, it's not strictly digital copies, but it's things that you can get copies of. Um, you can tell this is fairly new and I'm still struggling with what this is a little bit. It does include digital copies and that's usually what you're after. If these are actual scanned documents that you can use in the classroom. Um, then down below there's descriptions only. I find this really helpful. It used to be combined in the old search engine and if you go into ARC, it's, um, then archival research catalog it still is. Um, but this it's very helpful to separate the descriptions of the documents that are actually in, that are held in, physically in um, National Archives buildings from the, do the documents that are online. And so these two boxes separate those for you, which I think is very, very helpful. Um, then down at the bottom, you can see that this particular one is from archives.gov. Now that's going to be from exhibits, from material from uh, prologue articles, from journal articles, from and things that were written by archivists. Um, this particular one I was looking for, um, I think the title, the search that I used was the Jewish Civil War because I, I knew that the Jewish community had existed in the United States from the very beginning and I wanted to know how they participated in the Civil War. And I found this, um, this reference to a, a program that was put on at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. on Civil War. Um, um, Jews in the Civil War, and um, this is, oh man, I've forgotten his name, it's too bad. Um, this is, his last name's Benjamin, he was, um, he was the first Jewish legislator in the United States Congress, but he, and he also was the Vice President of the Confederacy. He was from Louisiana, Judah Benjamin, that's his name. And and so I would not even have known about him if I hadn't done this search and just looked at this section. Because you remember I said that the exhibits and the lesson plans and the um, journal articles, et cetera, that are in this archives.gov section are the things that have been created in the past that were really topical. And so they're very helpful for teachers to just find their topic. The materials. Um, Whoops, I'm going to go back. Can I go back? Go back. Um, you can see that there's a column on the left. Those are for limiting what you are looking at. Um, you can see that you can limit by date. You can limit by type of documents. You can limit by the location of the original documents, etc. cetera. Um, and that will focus your search even more. Now they're they're adding things to this all the time. A few things are still not there, um, and occasionally I don't have it on this frame, but occasionally you will find at the bottom something called um, authority records. They're not authority rec they're not authority records as librarians think of. They're um, they're records that have been identified by a company name or a person's name that might come up because of the search that you made. So I don't find those terribly useful for classroom, but um, you might find something in there. And so um, I just don't want you to be surprised if that, that block comes up that didn't come up on this search. Another wonderful thing that we have um, new, it's, it's not brand new, but and it's 
sort of static as far as how many documents are in it. It's got 1,200 documents in it. Um, but it's really exciting for kids. And so if you wanted to get a kid a little bit turned on with primary source documents, you might want to send them to Digital Vault. Or you can go play yourself. It's really fun to do. Um, Digital Vault is digitalvaults.org. You can go there directly, or you can get there from our web, our main page. Um, this is what it looks like when you first bring it up, and it's the thing that I can't do on a static page is show you how it's moving. Every one of those little squares is moving around, and a message is coming across the whole time while the records are loading. You can see in the bottom um, right corner it says the records are loading. And then it gets, once everything gets loaded, it says to continue, and you move on to something that looks something like this. It actually will give you a facing page with just three or four documents. Um, and then it will move you to this. If you pass your cursor over any of the t tags, it will show you how the documents relate to one another. Um, and it will also, um, you can also drag documents into the center. You can click on the center document and it will um, give you, um, it will give you more information about the document itself. Um, okay. So there wa that wasn't a question, was it, Jennifer, for me? Or I saw something go by. Sorry. And Sorry, it, that I, was me. No, it I wasn't. I found myself distracted. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. I was just uh, letting you know that, um, for, that, that for that first slide that was having all the movement and stuff on there, it was very cool to check that out. Um, and it is possible for us to push that slide for folks to view. You just can't go through all the searches necessarily. Um, the, the most important part about this, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but um, the most important part about Digital Vault is that uh, is what you can do with it. Um, it's got some very broad, it's, it's designed specifically for students and teachers. And it has some broad um, things that you can do with it. For instance, at the bottom of this frame, it shows that you can collect documents. So you can do a search. You can do keyword searches um, just below where it says collect. And you can look up a, a topic and then it will pull all of those, anything that has that topic name in it, and then you can filter it using the tags or filters on in the yellow box. Um, and also the kids can see the relationships, which is what I really like about it. One thing that I really like. You can also backtrack if you look at the next tag down at the bottom next to collect. Um, you can make a whole collection of documents. You can backtrack, which will take you back you know, to one that you were before. Kind of if you get off track, which happens to us all the time, um, then you can go back. Pathways is a game that there are games in there that are um, already produced, like there's one that, that you work your way through Lincoln documents, including you know the building of the Lincoln Monument and all sorts of other things. Um, but there are several of those. Or you can build your own. Um, and then there's search, of course, which is what we're in at this point. But create, create is a really fun thing that you can do with um, National Archives with Digital Vault uh, because you can create a poster. The student can create a poster uh, using the documents that he's created. And you can see down at the bottom of this, it also tells a little bit about the pathway challenge, which is the that particular one is making your own. Um, but the poster is saved online. They can print it out, use it in class, or they can create a um, a Ken Burns type movie using the documents that they have collected. So it's a it's a good um, it's a good uh, way to really engage students with primary sources. And sometimes they're you know they don't see the importance of them, but they begin to see where 
how they relate to one another, and how they can be used in these documents in this um, program as well. So I would recommend that you just give it to anybody who is in need of support in that respect. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is Docs Teach. Um, it's getting kind of famous. How many of you have used it so far? Has anybody used it yet? Um, Docs Teach has been out for about two and a half, three months. Um, it's quite spectacular. It, um, we're adding documents to it all the time. It doesn't have the limitation that Digital Vaults does. Digital Vaults will never be more than 1,200 documents. Docs Teach, um, we can add documents to all the time. So if you're particularly interested in a subject, you could, you, we could have a conversation. You and I could have an email conversation or talk on the phone even about um, what topic you would like to see. And I can see if I can push documents into Docs Teach for you to use. So um, it has that capacity. It might take us a while to do that. You know, as you know, it takes a little while to get these things done. But you can see that um, there are, um, it's, it's completely dedicated for teachers, librarians, and students. It, 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 it actually is for teachers to push to their students so that students can do activities. And, and it's, uh, I'll show you a little bit about it here. Um, since nobody's used it before, this is like I've, I, I, uh, I can just walk through it, and um, and if you have any questions, you feel free to ask at this point. Um, you can see right now there's more than 3,000 primary sources in, from the National Archives. So if you go into this section, which is on the front page, you can also see that there's something going on at the bottom of this page that looks like a balance tipping back and forth. And I'll talk a little bit about, more about that. Those are activities that can be created that you can use in the classroom or that a teacher can use or um, anyone can use in the classroom. Um, when we're going into search in, um, in Docs Teach, you go in through that button. And then if you browse, you'll see that um, the page that comes up is primarily um, based on the errors. Um, and you can go into any era and look at documents and then narrow it down from there. So for instance, I think I have an example here. Let's see. Yeah, I clicked on Civil War and Construction and Reconstruction and got 570 documents from the Civil War and Reconstruction era. Um, and um, any of those could be used, of course. And um, and then I wanted to know more about during that era, so I, I went in to search while I was in that browser, just clicked over on that other tab and clicked in John Brown, and I got information about John Brown during the Civil War. Um, you can also limit by, um, by type. Uh, for instance, I was looking for a map of, I was looking for a Civil War map to see if there was one on Docs Teach yet. Um, and there wasn't, not just for the Civil War generally. So I changed my search term to Georgia, clicked map, and then I found several, uh, two Georgia maps um, for the time period. Um, and you just need to play with this. It's very user friendly. Teachers have been just jumping in and having a wonderful time with it. Um, also, you can go to featured documents. This means that they're featured in an activity that's already created. Um, so you could look at this and then just go to an activity and send the, act the, the pre-created activity to your students. And then your students can do the activity and send it back to you. Um, so that's pretty wonderful. And for all you librarians, the you can um, send these to your teachers. You can suggest it to your teachers as well. Um, this particular one is on Tennessee, as you can see. 
Um, NR, if you type NR into the search box, uh, it means these are materials that are out in the regional facilities of the National Archives. They're, they're materials that are not in Washington, D.C. They're somewhere else. Um, and you can narrow it down by location as well. Um, if you type in, I don't have any idea why they chose 1011 instead of 2011, but this is the National History Day. If you type in NHD 1011, you'll get documents that fit the 2011 nat National History Day theme. And of course, everybody, I know we get a lot of National History Day students that come in and um, and want documents for their topic, and this can help with that. Um, I don't know how many walk-ins you get. Do any of you get walk-ins for National History Day? Any students come to you? No? Um, OK. Then, so, so when you do these searches, let me see if I can go back. I think I have Zachary Taylor on this page. Yes, I have Zachary Taylor on this page. So when I clicked on Zachary Taylor, I got um, Zachary Taylor. It allows me to print a docu this document. It gives me an ARC number, an ARC number, and that's that archival research catalog. If you want to know more about this subject, you should go back to our, our search page and look at the, the ARC catalog, and it will give you more details. Um, I just did that with a slavery case and found all kinds of stuff in the scope and content note. Um, the archivists will write in the scope and content note their material, their background information on whatever the document is. Sometimes it's not always there, but but that's what I get if I don't log in. If you see up there in the upper right hand corner, there is uh, the opportunity to either log in or register on this page. And um, if I don't log in, this is what I get. Here's what I get if I do log in. It gives me the ability to star this item. And if I star this item, then I can go back and find it on a starred list and add it to an activity. So it's important. I, mean, I just tell everybody, just log in. Just sign up. It, there's no nothing attached to it. You'll never get an email um, because of it. But um, it's just so that we sort of can count who's using it. Also, if you sign up, you're able to create activities yourself that, will be, that can be published and used by other teachers. So we have, I don't know exactly the numbers, we have most of our original activities that are pre-created are, have been done by National Archives educators. But we have quite a few um, that have been added by teachers of late. I, I used one just the other day that have signed in. So, so um, where am I here? Oh, and Zachary Taylor, when I searched Zachary Taylor, I got uh, some information on him, that, um, and, but I went back to Wikipedia, which is, you know, not everybody loves Wikipedia because it's um, alterable, but um, just for some general information, I wanted to know more about him so that maybe I could find out more because sometimes our search terms, you know, are just I just had looked for Zachary Taylor. I, did, I needed to know more about him. And I was pretending to be a student who was looking for him. So then I went back and looked at secondary sources. I just want to stress the importance of using secondary sources as well in relationship with primary sources. I'm sure that you guys know that way better than I do. Anyway, um, I checked and found that he was, of course, in the Mexican War. I, I also checked ProQuest. Now, the reason that I have this on here is because in our, if you come use our material in the National Archives in, in Seattle or any National Archives, we have several uh, new search engines that can be used in the building that couldn't be used before. And one of them is ProQuest. 
which is journal and book abstracts. And I learned um, they're all abstracts. Uh, some of them are very long abstracts, but they're still only abstracts. They're not the original documents. But, and I'm uh, positive you guys know about that as well. But um, the uh, this was so that I could get more background information on Zachary Taylor and the Mexican War. And in the process, then I went back and typed in Mexican War in Docs Teach and got more information, um, including a reference um, uh, to an, um, no, 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 no. Um, anyway, I got more information on Zachary Taylor. And then I went to um, Archive Finder, which is another one of those databases that we now have in accessible in our research rooms in Seattle, um, and uh, discovered a reference to the Allegheny Portage Railroad. Well, of course, you know what I'm doing is just following a research path. I'm kind of getting off track. I'm doing all the kinds of things that everybody does when they do research. But I wanted to know then, in Archives Finder, um, how many of you use Archives Finder? Do you have access to it somewhere else? Just raise your hand if you have access, if you've ever used it. Nobody's ever used it? OK. Um, Archives Finder is great because you can type in a topic, and it will tell you what archives across the country it exists in. And you can find things in very odd places, like you know, small historical society libraries and things like that. I find it very useful. At any rate, this particular one from the West Virginia University Library showed um, when I typed in Zachary Taylor got Allegheny Portage Railroad, and I wanted to know what that was all about. Um, and um, I just discovered, I think I took that frame out, but I just, oh no, here it is. I just skipped it somehow. Um, that Zachary Taylor campaigned on the on the tail end of the. Allegheny Portage Railroad. He was campaigning by train, which you know told me something about Zachary Taylor I certainly didn't know before. Um, back to um, Doc's teach about our activities. The activities that are created on this website are useful for um, making for students. I'm just going to show you some of them. Um, as an example. Um, here you can either find and use activities. Now those are the ones that were created by teachers or by the National Archives Education Team. Um, or you can create activities of your own by dragging and dropping. Absolutely you need to be log you need to log in. You can see I'm logged in at this point on the screen. Um, these these particular ones, I'm back in the, the, the already created ones. Um, you can see that I'm choosing Civil War and Reconstruction. So I'm going to go see what somebody's already done on Civil War and Reconstruction. And I find that there are several different types of activities that can be done. There are um, there are blackouts. The teacher can black out sections and then ask questions, or do comparisons, or weigh evidence, or um, there's, there's several different ones. You just need to play with it. It's it's pretty exciting to play with. It's really fun. The teachers really love it. Um, this particular one is bulldog grip. It's the the teacher blacked out who the letter was. It's a letter from. Um, Abraham Lincoln to someone, and he was the teacher has blacked out the name of the person um, that it was written to, and then the question is, um, who do you think this is? How do you know? Where you know those kinds of higher level thinking pro um, projects. Um, in this particular case, it's. Grant, I think, who um, held on with a bulldog grip, at, um, and it talks about that. Um, yeah, very an interesting letter. But 
um, you can also focus. You can zoom in, and the teacher can just focus on a section of a document or show the whole document itself. Um, that's another pro that's another activity. And then the student responds. Um, weighing the evidence is one that I love to do. So I'm just going to show you that one really quickly. Um, for instance, this particular one is the events before the Battle of Gettysburg. This is what the teacher's page looks like. It has a synopsis. And the teacher can, when, when you're creating your own, you create these, the synopsis, the teacher's instructions, all the background material, all that that's on this page. Um, and then the documents, you see up in the upper right hand corner, documents have been included in the activity. It's, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory when you go through the process of, of creating one as well. This one's already created. Um, this is what it looks like when the student looks at it. They um, drag those documents down to the um, balance, to the comparison, weighing the evidence uh, part, and they to determine whether they think that um, Gettysburg turned the tide of the war, um, which side had the advantage before Gettysburg, the Union or the Confederacy, and they move it to any point. Um, and it ends up looking something like this. I just drug them down kind of at random. I don't, don't know that I took a lot of time to see if I was accurate or not. But, um, and then they would send it to their teacher. Um, or anybody else, they can send it on and um, and complete the activity. And so they can use this for homework. They can send this home for homework. And um, and again, to create your own, you need to be logged in. Um, okay, questions? Anybody have questions about our new stuff? A lot of our old stuff. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Um, well, I have some questions. Do you think this would be useful in your work? What's the check mark mean? Somebody tell me what a check mark means. It, it means yes. yes. I forgot. Well, that means yes. Everybody who thinks it would be useful say yes. Mark is the check mark. <laughs> I will say yes. Okay, good. Um, great. What we do want you to know that um, we have we have archivists on staff all the time. I'm there. All, I'm at the National Archives in Seattle all the time. Um, if you have questions or you need help, please let us know. We, um, we love to help school teachers and students. I do particularly, but we have lots of archivists that feel the same way that I do. So um, uh, we're more than welcome. We're, you're more than welcome to send students. You're more than welcome to use our resources. Or if you have any questions about the way the resources can be used, or if you get stuck using Docs Teach, I'm not really a power user yet. I'm attempting to get there as fast as I can. Um, and as soon as I am, then perhaps I can be more of a resource to everyone else. Um, so anyway, that's about it, I think. And I was told to keep it to 40 minutes, and I'm at about 40. I'm usually go over. I'm at about 50. So you have something else to add, Jeremy? Or We don't have any other presentation, but um, if people have questions, it looks like Oh, OK, Sue has a question. She says, thank you so much. Very interesting subject, all new to her. This would be especially valuable for her question point librarian to direct students. Thank you for sharing that, Sue. Are there other comments or questions? Oh, What's question point? Can I ask a question mm -hmm. about what question point is? Sue, did you want to answer that, or did you want us to answer? 
All right. So it says like, okay, question point is a reference service, and I is it Ask a Librarian? Is that the one it is where people email or virtual reference? I know it is a reference. Yes, it's a reference service online. So the librarians would then be able to point people to your resources. Is that a, some kind of special company or is that associated with Washington State Libraries? Um, it's, it's a product. So it's, it's, a it's a chat reference. And the Washington State Library subsidizes ASQA. And I'm not sure that I thought it was something other than question point. I thought it was um, a different product, but it might be question point. I'm not the virtual reference guru, but yes, the State Library does have a virtual reference service at the State Library as well as help the libraries throughout the state have access to it. Great. I'll have to look, I'll have to look at that and see. We're we're going to try something for I think a couple of months where we have asked the archivist um, for I think June and July on the National Archives. I don't know if it's going to be on the blog exactly, um, but I will get back with you and let you know where exactly where that's going to be. So that if you have specific just for any archivist or any of the archives across the United States, you can ask them there. So it's got to be something like that, right? Great, thank you. Other questions and comments for Carol? Well, thank you, Carol, so much for that great presentation. Kind of overwhelming, wonderful amount of resources, and we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. So we can. Well, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you very much for asking me. This is this is wonderful. We we really um, love to work with librarians, so this is great. And teachers. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll be around for a little bit. I imagine Carol can hang around, and we'll go ahead and stop the archive and welcome questions and comments. Thank you, everyone. And next month, please join us for our next first Tuesday uh, program.